All right, I'm gonna show you how I did this a little bit better. So if this was hooked back up correctly, it would go into this little slot here. Some of the TVs, older ones, aren't gonna have this little clip. They're gonna be soldered in directly to the circuit board and you can just cut it because basically this isn't uh, power going in. This is like an input. So let me kind of get out here. And now this is just hooked up like the regular TV as if I just opened it up. I took off the case, I opened it up, and right here is these four wires. Now these are the four wires that you would disconnect if they were soldered in there and just disregard them from the bottom. Once you have them disconnected, for me, it's just a matter of pulling that out. And then I took uh, these are uh, pins for uh, soldering onto circuit boards and stuff or wiring. Uh, you don't need to do it this way, but you can cut the wires and solder each one individually uh, and then cap them off. But I made a little plug that just plugs right in. And basically, you take your speaker wires and you have your... Sorry. You have your, your left uh, speaker and you have your right speaker. And it's going into a stereo. For me, um, I have my stereo hooked up into a patch bay here I made. And this patch bay, see this is the stereo right here, going to the left and right channels. Uh, and then that carries over on here and there's switches where I can turn the channels on and off for controlling uh, all my cymatic stuff. But I also have a mixing board here for separating channels left and right and uh, separating channels for frequencies because I have two frequency generators. These are two channels. One, two, three, four. So this is one, two, three, and I disconnected the other one. It's uh, right here. Four. And so I can play individual frequencies if you don't have like this kind of stuff and you just had like a computer you would get yourself a splitter where you would have a stereo to mono and mono kind of like uh, this where you have stereo here and then this would be mono and mono not stereo and stereo uh, don't get a splitter with the stereo and stereo because that defeats the purpose but then you'd plug that into your computer and then play frequencies on pan it on your computer left and right and then you can at least have two channels of left and right uh, for two different frequencies because it does require at least two frequencies to kind of mess with the x and y factors um, so when i'm hooked up to here then i can play individual frequencies uh, the main volume I can adjust and then each one of these I can adjust and I can adjust the low frequencies Mid ranges and the high frequencies and pan it and the gains and blah 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 So it makes it a lot easier if you have a cheap mixing board hooked up to your stereo um, basically you go out of your your mixing board into this input like a CD input into the stereo or auxiliary into the stereo and then from there your stereo is your output and then that's this this is a left and right speaker hookup they're just hooked into the speaker channels that will play uh, this mixing board I can hook anything I want into the mixing board and so with the separation of these wires it's the same thing as a speaker uh, setup you have a left ground and then a right and a ground. Uh, I just kind of figured it out by setting the pins in there 
and uh, taking to the speaker wires and touching it until I saw the little dot move. Because once you pull this out, let me, let me uh, plug this back in and turn it on so I could show you what happens. So you can make sure that you're, you got it, that you, you get it correct. Okay, so that's plugged in now. Turn that on. And it should just be playing like a static, like a regular TV. See, it's just regular TV. And uh, that's connected into here. So we disconnect that, that thing and you get a dot. So now you have an X and a Y factor with this going this way and this way. Each one of these, if you wanted to hook current up to it, you'd probably just have to have a voltage regulator because it uh, doesn't require a lot of power. But if you wanted to read power, it's the same thing. Like you're, you're hooking up a positive and negative to each channel. Uh, then you could hook it up so you can do two different circuits if you wanted to, just like two different speakers. So you can read two different circuits together to see how they would interact to each other, just like an os oscilloscope, you know? Um, so basically I hook this now directly into my little pin doesn't matter which direction I do because it's left and right left and right so let me set this down right here real fast and I'm gonna plug this in okay see the dot thing is is you don't want to have too much power going to this because it will blow the TV uh, circuit up so you just want to start off with low and that's one frequency probably it's either 432 or 2000 so that's probably 2000 so that's 432 and it's it's if I pan it to one way, to the left, it's flat, that's centered, and that's panned the other way, to the right. So if I leave it centered, and then add the second frequency to it, now that one is panned to the left, that's centered, and then that's panned to the right. Now, if I pan them both to the right, we'll get still the circle. And then pan to the other one to the left, it stretches out the other way. So my other light is on, so it's going to have a reflection. But I'm just trying to show you how this works. So if I turn up that, put them both centered again, it makes it that way. If I change the frequency on one, it's going to do different things on different levels. So once again, we can change which way the direction goes by panning it. If you were to add current to this or try to use this as like as for current, you would just be using probably a left and right potometers. Um, kind of situation for the voltage. It's like 2,000 hertz, 2,337 hertz. If I just turn one frequency down, it's just going to stretch. 
and it'll start to rotate. Higher you go, the smaller. We're at 10 hertz, zero hertz. One hertz, two hertz, three. And then as you go up, you can start to see the movement creating a circle. It's when you add the second frequency that you start to be able to shape Cool thing is, is you can see how the rotation works on certain things between counterclockwise and clockwise when frequencies are like 180 and now turning it down to 178. 180, 178. You go down, go lower, it goes faster. But you always find that there'll be a balance like something like 180 hertz exactly 181 started rotating the other way faster see so you can understand how some currents will fluctuate in in, in this sense it would go from negative to positive that's how I see it you know one way is positive one way is negative counterclockwise, clockwise, it kind of works this, a similar w way. So when I add this second frequency, it's like an oscillation between the two, depending on how much I amplify this, that second frequency is how much more energy is being applied, and that's why it's getting bigger. I'm going to turn down the main volume to shrink it down. Like I said, you don't want to crank it too much you'll you'll end up breaking it so once you pan it you can start to see which way things are really looking when you look at this perspective we pan it all the way we center it looks like that if I pan one frequency but center the other one and one frequency center the other one. Each way I pan it will do different perspectives because you're turning the view. the third frequency and I can also pan those ones to turn which way those ones are going to be affecting the way it looks and then even a fourth frequency is going to look the best to see which pattern the way three frequencies oscillate and I'm sure if you ran through some of the different frequencies like right around there you can start to see how those ones are affecting the other two frequencies I guess because I, 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 I look at a lot of frequencies and I, I, I look at them through the bubbles and the cinematics and 
things like that. I just see things in that sense a lot, a lot differently how this works. Um, so a lot of people try to explain things because they understand the scientific reality of things and I tend to not explain anything scientific at all <laughs> but that's cool because I like other people to have their opinions and make their perspectives of of things too even though you know what can we do you know I've been learning that it's not about what I say or what people say anymore as long as people are doing something good in life and trying to help others that that's really all that matters and that's all I'm trying to do somebody else can take this and use this in, in such a better way by understanding what they do with electronics and then maybe that would help them understand how to build something a little bit correct you know because that's how I see it you know I look at frequencies and then I, I, I determine how something can work, you know? Like that's a good balance right there between these two frequencies. That's 181 hertz and 425 hertz. But I uh, offset the panning a little bit. One is to all the way to the right and the other one is just a little bit to the right. creates these nice little patterns inside here, these little pinpoints. It's like how our planets rotate. Planets to me are like these little vortex pinpoints, stabilized frequencies that everything else is moving around them, current, and electricity, plasma, static, vacuum, all that kind of stuff is moving. But holding all these things in a stable rotation, I always see it in frequencies. Like, I didn't study this stuff. I, I, I learned everything by doing everything myself from the very beginning. And I've only been doing this for like five years and taking things apart and putting frequencies into motors, into all kinds of different experiments to see what they do and how they affect things. And the more I, I, I look at them, the more I can see how things function mechanically. And when you understand the simple, simple reality of just simple frequencies, you can see how everything else was created. So this is pretty cool. I'm going to stop it here or else I'll just keep talking. <laughs>